Okay, so this EK needed new ignition barrel. It also needed door lock as well, which is why we changed the full set, but it just kept jamming up and it wouldn't turn easily. So first step, remove the three screws underneath. After that, just pop the cover off, being careful not to break any tabs. If you've got um, an interior tool, one of those ones which opens like the opposite of a pair of pliers, that will help there. And now we can see the ignition barrel and on top we can see the shear head bolts. But first of all, we're gonna remove the two screws on the back of the barrel there, which removes the ignition switch. You could do this after when it's hanging down, but it was just a little bit easier for me there. That's what the key turns when it turns. Now on top, you can see them shear head bolts. So we're gonna use a flatted screwdriver or a punch to get these to turn now. You can remove the full column from the car to do this, but I was just being a bit lazy. So flatted screwdriver, giving it a few bangs and taps and it will start to unturn. They're not up super, super tight these. They are quite weak um, shear head bolts. And you can see once you get it loose, you can just hold the bottom of the barrel and untwist it with your finger. Now, it was fiddly and took ages, and I had a full another barrel and the top bit. So instead of doing the other one as well, I just bent it out of the way and then knocked the barrel out just to save myself time. And I didn't want to risk like hitting the interior of this car with a hammer or anything like that. So it was just quicker and easier for me. But if you had time, you could take the steering wheel off, you could take, take the cowling off around the speedo, whatever works for you. There's a million different ways to skin a cat. Now you just gotta remove these couple of screws here, which is what holds the um, key reader to the barrel. Again, you could replace this with the full unit if you want to, you just gotta trace it back and unplug it from the fuse box. There it is, that's the sticky barrel disconnected. And you can see here on the new unit that I've got on the floor, a bit of better view of how to do it. Just sort of catching the edge of the bolt and it starts to spin it round. Comes undone super, super quick. And if you didn't want to have to undo these bolts, you could just replace the full column if you had managed to get a lock set on a column, but whatever. This is quite a low mileage EJ9, and I didn't want to have to undo and take apart too much of it. I wanted to keep it, you know, keep its originality somewhat. And I suppose I was being a bit lazy, but I was working at home, working with what I've got. You can see it hanging down there now. Now, instead of using the shear head bolts, I did manage to find... Um, a bolt that was the correct size so I could just nip it up. One of them worked, one of them didn't. So I did have to use um, one of the shear head bolts. And the shear head bolts, you put them back on the same way you took them off. You just hit them with a punch or a flatted screwdriver and the hammer and just tighten them back up. It's quite simple. So yeah, I've got one bolt and one shear head bolt there. Once that's done, it's as simple as reattaching the key reader part, reattaching the back of the barrel, plastic covers and the screws, and you're done. Obviously, what comes next depends on your immobiliser situation and what ECU you're running and all that sort of stuff. But this is the basic of how to change your barrel to get a key that works or, you know, whatever your situation is. So there you can see it's a much smoother operation. And now I've got to move on to the door lock because someone's had a go at breaking into it at some point. So door lock smashed as well.